For thousands and thousands of years, astrologers and mathematicians have been greatly impressed by the majestic regularity of the stars moving in the skies. The knowledge of the ancient finding is something we are still trying to claw back. For many millennia, if not longer, the ancient civilizations tried hard to discover the secrets of this cosmic universal clock. These sky watchers realize that a very long period of time, one probably encompassing millions of years, had to exist that would represent in even numbers the revolutions of all celestial objects. At the end of such a constant period, all bodies of the ferment would again find themselves in their original position on the band of the zodiac. These astrologers and mathematicians call this time span the Great Constant. They did not know that indeed this number existed and had been calculated tens of thousands of years before their time to be used by even earlier civilizations. But then lost and forgotten as cataclysmic natural disasters and wars destroyed one civilization after another and traumatized the human mind into a state of forgetfulness. The struggle to understand, the knowledge that was once gained is now lost, but not entirely forgotten as we look back in modern times as these achievements and awaken from the darkness that has held us captive. The ancient astrologers tried in vain to find the great constant and finally gave up. But now by a chain of strange coincidences, this magical number has been found in an old clay tablet from Nineveh in the library of Ashurbanipal, king of the Neo-Assyrian Empire. All of the orbits of the planets can be expressed by one single number, which is a singularity shared common denominator. But what is it doing on an ancient clay tablet? The library was discovered in the ruins of the Assyrian civilization, located in modern-day Iraq in the 19th century. Within this library were thousands of clay tablets etched with cuneiform writings. These writings were a collection of the science and history even at that time, assembled from the previous civilizations, and these discoveries led to the unearthing of the story of the epic saga of Gilgamesh, which has been asserted by scholars to be the original source document for the story of Noah and the Flood. Indeed, it is the only story of Noah that is in the simplified version of this much more ancient account. The number is 70 multiplied by 60 seven times, as the Sumerians counted by 60. The number apparently came directly from their civilization, and modern numerologists and Sumerian historians agree that these tablets originated there. Since the Sumerians invented the use of days, hours, and seconds, using their base 60 counting system, it can be inferred that this number might have been a measured of a certain discrete quantity of seconds. This discovery is revolutionary. With the numbers alone, you can calculate the exact time it takes any planet, comet, or celestial object in the solar system to make one full cycle around the sun down to the second. And that is not all. The mysterious number also encompasses an exact multiple of the precision. As we all know, it would also encompass the sunspot cycles as well, since they are a direct harmonic of the precision through the great solar cycle. The precision of the Nineveh constant is summarized in a one and all important quote that David Wilcox posted on the Divine Cosmos in 2005, which reads, Every period of revolution or conjunction of all the solar system bodies calculated by the constant of Nineveh correspond exactly down to several decimal points with the values given in the modern tables of United States astronomers, but it's completely impossible, right? The research in question by Maurice Chatlin, a mathematician and astrophysicist who worked on communications for NASA and was also a member of the Apollo team who calculated the orbits needed for the long-lasting man-made journeys in space, these credentials are astonishing because this guy tells us that yes, this was a precise civilization, one before even the great Sumerians who were advanced beyond even our wildest assumptions. We're telling you guys, we are only now beginning to awake from this slumber. The fact here is that 6,000 years ago, a very old method was communicated to the Sumerians who etched the numbers on this tablet. The understanding must have been from a previous wave of existence because the Sumerians failed to communicate this information going forward. It is strange that it re-emerged here before being completely lost again. Of course, we point out separation of civilization. Bronze Age collapse has a lot to answer for. The Nineveh constant is a calculator, and it is designed to fit the rotation of every planet into a certain round number of cycles. Not in years, as in the Mayan calendar, but incredibly in seconds. But we must not fail to see the harmonies that are at work here. The numbers in the octave, according to David Wilcox, had a fundamental geometry and vibration. 
Their large order functions have definite internal waveforms, structures, and movement. And now, we are seeing is the master cycle of the entire solar system is built up from nothing more than 70 multiplied 7 times by 60. In other words, the harmonic vibrations of the numbers 6 and 7 at the top of the octave. What this shows us is that each planetary orbit could also be thought of as a harmonic wavelength, a precise length. Now, we can see that the entire solar system is fundamentally interconnected through the same system. The same harmonic stresses in space-time that amass the continents with the global grid have similar effects on astronomical and astrological cycles, and so, for this lost ancient advanced civilization that possessed knowledge of true properties of vibration, we can demonstrate that the Nineveh constant itself would be the only large number one ever needed to keep on hand. Calculating the precise length of any planetary orbit or cycle would then be a simple question of dividing the constant by one of a set of such similar numbers that you could easily memorize. It just so happens that if you divide the Nineveh constant by 240, that is exactly what you will get. And the number 240 is a precise harmonic of 24, the number of hours in a day. If you want Halley's Comet, divide the number by 81,000, which is the harmonic of 9 times 9. Chatelaine shows us that the ninth cycle existed on both sides of the Atlantic and that the Mayans had it as well, only in a different harmonic base that preserved their love for the vibration of the number 13. The Maya arrived at the great constant of the solar system in two ways. They expressed it as a multiple of 26 Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions, as well as a multiple of their Mayan calendar cycle of 260 Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions. Again, we see the Mayans insist on the use of 26 and 260 for counting. The other harmonic numbers that seems to pop out at us is possibly being a part of divine order is 25, expressing the approximate number of the Earth years in the percussion of 25,000 and possibly embedded in the very alignment of Giza with the Zodiac. When the Sphinx gaze aligns with Regulus, the cycle is reset. This is the true harmonic count number for the great breath of the sun that was given in the raw law of one series. It also has extreme pyramid logical importance. These astounding discoveries also encompass even further extenuations of the harmonic importance of 25,000 in the great cycle of the solar system. If we remove a mere seven days from the common value for Pluto's orbit around the sun of 90,727 days, which is perfectly possible given the inaccuracies of our measuring capabilities, we get 90,720 days, and again, this is a precise harmonic of G metron number. When we divide the round number into the Nineveh constant of 2.268 million days, we get exactly 25,000. The great solar cycle gravitates towards a harmonic ideal of 25,000 Earth years in length, and the Nineveh cycle is exactly 25,000 of Pluto's years. The cycles appear identical, constant in the same harmonic number of 25 for two different planets. And of course, 25 is a direct vibration of the number 5. The number 25 in the pyramid is indicated as the square of 5. The numerology for the number 5 is the initiation into the mysteries of the universe. By squaring the number, we then have a sudden and dramatic increase on the basic meaning of initiation. The author of Great Pyramid Decoded refers to this number as an indication of the Messiah or the Great Initiate. Indeed, 25 is the fundamental number of all ascended people. The Casey reading explained that the second coming of Christ is the drawing of the Christ light within all of humanity. Therefore, we have a possible numerological clue that tells us that this grand solar system cycle itself produces initiation, or what we are referring to as a higher dimensional advancement. Other interesting possibilities emerge as well when we consider that the harmonic numbers have actual spiritual meanings, etched into the mind of God itself. The entire solar system may be a very carefully encoded message of extraordinary spiritual depth, if we allow ourselves not to restrict the power of the mind in this harmonic system. The mystery of the ancient civilization must be adapted. We are lost just now thinking that time began 5,000 years ago, Spread the word, guys. Civilization must have existed in an advanced setting to even begin to understand these things. Either that or it has been brought here by God. But what do you guys think about this? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.